You are about to witness the ramblings of a deranged man as he attempts to find any sign of life in Arizona's driest spring in recent memory. Unfortunately for him, the only thing that brings him happiness in his jobless, no friends, boring life is going outside and finding cool animals. Even when the conditions outside look like this. That's right. This is showing the state of Arizona with over 80% of the total land area in severe drought. So good luck, little buddy. You're gonna need it. Now, luckily for our protagonist, it's not actually immensely difficult to find many ant species out, even in the driest conditions. That includes Pogonomermex maricopa, one of the most active ants in conditions like these. Not to be outdone, their very close cousin Pogonomermex barbatus shows up with a fiery defense pose. I guess when it's this dry out, you really can't be affording to lose any unnecessary workers. So these guys are on high alert. Now also on high alert is this here velvet ant. Although her preferred method of self-preservation is blending in with this dried plant material. And given her golden coloration, I'd say she's doing a pretty good job. These wingless wasps actually do have a pretty potent sting, but they'd rather not use it if they can avoid the trouble. I'm actually out here today in search of one very specific thing, that being Ada Mexicana, the Mexican leafcutting ant. They've never actually been found in this area before, but with the way that the climate in Arizona has been slowly changing, I wouldn't be surprised if they could be here in the next 10 years. And maybe they're already here. Although, to be honest, I've been walking these washes for a while, and I haven't seen anything yet. Which, of course, is exactly when I get a glimpse of this. A little leaf being carried by a little ant. Unfortunately, this is not, in fact, the Mexican leafcutter ant, but its close cousin, the desert leafcutter ant, Acromermex versicolor. Which, in my opinion, is actually an even bigger surprise to find in habitat like this. The grasslands of southern Arizona are usually absent of this species, with their range being more restricted to typical desert habitat. But here they are, collecting dried mesquite leaves that have probably been sitting around for months, since the trees haven't had any live leaves in who knows how long. In fact, you can tell that it's been pretty rough for these guys because they have deolate queens foraging in their trails. This is probably surprising to some, but it's actually a relatively common behavior in this species. This species tends to fly pretty late in the year, and if the rains stop too early, then there will be no opportunities for the queens to fly, and instead of just dying or flying in bad conditions, they'll shed their wings and act as workers for the colony. So if you're seeing this, it's usually a good sign that the previous summer's monsoon season ended really early. Now, luckily, just about everybody out here is adapted for dry conditions in one way or another. Even more fragile organisms, such as baby animals that are just getting into their first year of life, have ways to adapt. I know this is true because I found this baby western diamondback rattlesnake under a log, which is actually the first time I've ever found a viper underneath a piece of cover. So I guess that just goes to show that even though it's really dry, Things are finding a way. Finding a way to evade me, I should say. I've been walking around in this desert for two days, and not only have I not found the Atta I was looking for, I'm also only finding the most common species out here. It's not that I don't appreciate them, but I do need a little excitement in my life sometimes. So I went ahead and drove to an area that does have Atta Mexicana, guaranteed, and went and looked at some colonies. They are definitely a little bit sad, they're also collecting basically only dried leaves, just like the Acromermex at the other spot, but they're persisting as they always do. And just like with seeing those Acromermex, it's never a bad thing to see some leafcutter ants in the wild, especially when they're as big and impressive as Atta Mexicana are. And funnily enough, after looking at some Atta to clear my mind, my luck really started looking up. I quickly found this Neva Myrmex gracilliae colony, which is one of the few army ant species that I haven't yet seen in Arizona that's been pretty high on my list. I mean, just look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. The red and black coloration really reminds me of the way that fire ants look, and given that Neva Myrmex often prey on fire ants, I'm not entirely convinced that that coloration is a coincidence. 
although it very well could be. Still, it's really cool to check off a species that I've been waiting to see for many years now, especially in conditions as horrible as these are. Although, speaking of horrible conditions... Oh my goodness, it actually decided to rain. Okay, well, I guess I'm going out once again to see what this little rainstorm happened to bring out from hiding. And alright, off rip we have more army ants. This time the much more common Neva Mermex nigrescens, although it's a much more impressive display from them. Not only are there tons of workers under this rock, but they're eating some termites as well, which is always fun to see. And to keep things rolling, it didn't take me long to find one of my favorite ant species, Campanotus ocreatus, and a pretty good sized colony of them as well. It's not exactly hard to find these guys, but it's always welcome when I do. Not only do they have that beautiful coloration, but they are massive ants as well. Just super cool stuff all around. Not very long afterwards, we started finding these little insect-eating snakes. Southwestern black-headed snakes, and one decent-sized ground snake. All very cool stuff. And while we found ourselves getting distracted with these little gray noodles, a bright red velvet ant walked up on us. Now, of course, I've seen plenty of velvet ants, but I always have a soft spot for the bright red ones. After all, it's where the velvet in their common name comes from. And despite having a painful sting, they're actually pretty friendly. Like I said before, they don't want to cause trouble if they don't have to. The very last thing we ended up finding was a few Campanotus sansabinus queens. These guys fly much earlier than most other ant species in Arizona, and so them being the first queens of the year is no big surprise. They must have flown just before we got here, since we're finding them under rocks in freshly dug founding chambers. So, while nothing I found this spring was particularly insane, other than maybe those pretty Neva Mermax, I still had a good time, and made the most of some pretty poor conditions. Hopefully as summer rolls around, we'll have a much more favorable monsoon season, and some good collecting to happen during that time. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.